Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway as we get ready to break down the latest commit for the Wildcats, their first transfer portal edition of the year because everybody's been panicking. Only departures. When when are we going to get good news on the transfer portal front? They got some really good news Monday night. I, not out of nowhere because Kilty was in town over the weekend, but certainly one of those that y- you weren't sure of if or when it was going to happen. And I think a lot of people probably didn't know it had happened until 40 minutes after the fact when Avery Johnson had shared it on his Instagram story uh, because Easton Kilty, he's one of these young pups that they're not even using Twitter anymore. They're, they're like my generation with Facebook. Uh, <laughs> he, he posted his commitment on Instagram, which I can tell you, I barely like following recruits on Twitter. I am certainly not following them on Instagram, uh, but Easton Kilty is a new member of the K-State football team. He spent the last four years at North Dakota. be a big offensive lineman for them to add. And you noted this in your story uh, that you wrote after his commitment. He's got two years left to play if he wants them because he has the super senior year after this coming season. Uh, Just, I guess, start with the the general info on Easton Kilty that everybody should know about. Uh, So some general info for Easton Kilty is that I mean, like you said, he was in town. He was one of three official visitors that were in Manhattan over the weekend. And kind of like you said, the thing that really threw me off more than Instagram was, well, number one, because this is kind of how in-depth I kind of got into this because you want to make sure that some people are still in town. So like you you check all kinds of all kinds of social media. His Instagram was actually private until last night. Oh, okay. there, there, there's a fun fact. Uh, but committing at 930 at night is what really threw me for a loop. I was like, OK, like done for the night, can, like <laughs> relax, recover, do whatever uh, for like today. And then you look and it's like, oh, nice. Uh, so some general info. He started, I think, 35 games now uh, in his career. So he he is like. Don't want to get everybody's hopes up too much because of the name that we're dropping here, but he's a little FCS version of Cooper BB a little bit because he played this season at left tackle. He's played left guard. He's played right guard. He's played right tackle. And he started at all four positions, which, you know, sounds a little familiar to you, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, so he has lots of experience, lots of versatility. Um, it, what's interesting about it is this is probably the the visitor that K-State probably felt, I don't want to say the worst about, but they were a lot more confident about the other visitors coming in. And even with uh, non-visitors, with people that were getting ready to visit or had visited in the past. And this was kind of one that was kind of a wait and see. But the the interesting thing is that, uh, another interesting thing is uh, Easton Kilty has used Twitter to like express his offers in the transfer portal before. But you know, one team that didn't get a tweet was K-State, hmm. which is which is interesting to think about because then he goes to Instagram and commits. So it, it's, that, that whole dynamic is interesting. <laughs> but this is a big, big win for K-State. And we'll, we'll get into that in uh, a few minutes as well, I I believe. Yeah, I mean, look, K-State obviously is in a position where they are losing a massive amount of offensive linemen after this year, and certainly they're bringing in what they feel is a strong and really talented class of offensive linemen. But true freshman offensive linemen, they they rarely play, and really you don't expect them to play. Although, as you noted on Easton Kilty, that's kind of the fascinating fact about him is that he, he does have some of that immediate playing time in his career. And he got thrown into the fire. Could you imagine this as a true freshman offensive lineman? Number one, he was a true freshman during the COVID season. So that was all kinds of wonky, especially at the FCS level because he played the spring. But um, he started as an offensive lineman in, in an FCS playoff game as a true freshman. So that, that was kind of an interesting fact about him. Um, another thing is that people will see that he was only honorable mention all, all Missouri Valley this year and be like, why does he have so many offers? Well, it's because he's really, really good. Sometimes what goes into these all conference teams, even you see it at in the FBS level and the power five and now power four level where you see somebody on there 
that we probably shouldn't be on there, but gets on the team. And then you see somebody at honorable mention level and you're like, why is this person not on the team? It, it kind of goes back to, uh, again, with Cooper Beebe this year. How's he not a uh, unanimous all Big 12 person? Like sometimes the people that vote on the teams get they it gets a little political. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, and look, it's not like he was eased into it. Uh the 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 game that he started, I believe it was against number one James Madison uh <laughs> in in the FCS playoffs that year. And yeah, like obviously with with this circumstance it's just like it's just like high school recruiting where you're like oh this guy's only like a three star or whatever look at the offers the offers is is the most important thing and when he went in he started announcing them in a hurry and it was tech auburn oklahoma state mississippi state nc state purdue virginia tech byu iowa state pitt arkansas a&m all those in k-state was able to win out there again uh, in all honesty, I mean, it's a little bit of a different circumstance because it is a, you know, a, a direct, you know, four year college transfer. But it would probably be similar in terms of like looking at Will Lee last year yes. where, you know, the the profile when you go there, the stars aren't going to stand out and smack you across the face and some of the other stuff. But if you look at the offers, you go, oh, this dude's legit. At least we thought he was <laughs> until he was pushing Iowa State guys into the end zone. Sorry to. Will's family that's going to come at me on Twitter now. Um, but like, this is the same type of deal where you look at this number one, the size sticks out at you. Six, five, three Oh five is that's a, that is a big dude. And look, K-State has had some big offensive linemen. Not sure that they've had any that are like that big in, in both ways. Uh, and then also obviously the offers that stack up there, he was highly sought after. Seems like a great fit for K-State and a, a great opportunity for them to kind of, bring in a new anchor to the offensive line as you're going to be working in a bunch of guys with either inexperience uh, on the field at this level or guys that are just brand new to the college game in general. And you want somebody with that experience. And obviously uh, there will be a lot in, in Easton Kilty's background that I think can help the uh, new crop of linemen coming in. Oh yeah. And uh, it's like you said, like he was a very wanted man. You, you go to the on three uh, rankings for, all players and you go to the interior offensive line and in the industry ranking uh easton guilty the number seven overall interior offensive lineman on the transfer portal and number 79 player overall so i mean this is this is a big win and like you said uh there there were a lot of schools coming after him texas a&m ironically had offered i think it was before colin klein was uh named the offensive coordinator uh iowa state's another big 12 school auburn Boston College, Mississippi State, and, and it. This is where it goes back to. It's kind of funny now when you look back on it that he hadn't posted the K State offer because you see all of those schools, and you want to. Th you'd think that like all of those schools are like, where do you think that he is this weekend? <laughs> yeah, and, and then he's actually at K State and ends up committing. Um, and this is a big time offensive lineman, and it, it's a plug and play where you feel like you can maximize Avery Johnson because you have a at least one proven guy coming back on your offensive line uh, with Hadley Panzer. And now you might you have a, an even more proven offensive lineman, albeit not at the power four. Uh, that, that, that's weird to say right now. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have one that's proven at the power four level, but you have one that's proven that he can do this before and at multiple positions where it's kind of like the Cooper BB effect where you can really maximize your best five offensive linemen because he can play anywhere. Where do you anticipate Easton Kilty slating it right now? I know it's it's way out and there's going to be a lot that has to be decided. Probably his position depends a lot on what other guys they feel like gives them the best starting offensive line next season. But at this point in time, where would you think K-State sticks him? My, my anticipation right now, I think I'd go back and forth between either left guard or maybe even left tackle. It, it depends on uh, some of the development of the younger tackles because I know John, John Pastore is a, a big person that they're waiting on and anticipating that he takes another leap where he's just right there and you kind of wait to see how he does during the spring or during the winter, then during the spring, and then start a fall camp. But he's somebody that could play a left tackle. He's a big-time baller run blocking from – the little bit of film that I've been able to watch so far. So left guard makes some sense too. 
So it, it really depends on how some of the younger players behind them start to develop. But I, I lean a little bit towards left tackle at the moment because that that's just an important position right now that has a little bit of a hole because you don't know who is going to play there yet. And you'd think that protecting the blind side with a new quarterback coming in will be the most important thing. Yeah, this is this is a good get for K-State. Nice way to open up the uh, transfer portal in terms of getting guys in. And now we'll see what the next steps forward are. But they've at least delivered here. And also we expect some uh, high school recruiting wins in the next couple of days as well. So that is the book on Easton Kilty. Stay locked into K-State Online for all of your K-State recruiting and team news that you need on both the basketball and the football front. And uh, keep coming back here to the K-State Online YouTube page because we'll have more of these updates on commits as they happen. So Easton Kilty is a Wildcat. Two years left if he wants it for sure will be a big addition for the 2024 season and helping to protect Avery Johnson. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching K-State Online.